Hello and welcome to my video on keeping sturgeon and koi in the same pond. So this is my four and a half to five foot Siberian sturgeon that I have in this pond. There are lots of things that have to be done slightly differently when you have sturgeon and koi in the same pond. Although having said that, in many cases the things that you have to do differently are a huge advantage to your koi's health as well. So either way it kind of balances itself out. So the first difference, and what I would consider the most important difference, is sturgeon's tolerance to low oxygen levels. Well sturgeon require above 8 milligrams per litre of oxygen, whereas koi only require 5 to 6 milligrams per litre as a minimum. And as you will almost always see, the differences between sturgeon and koi come from the oxygen dependency of sturgeon. So, I would recommend that anyone keeping sturgeon has air stones in their pond. You might think, as I used to do, that having water flowing into your pond, like falling into your pond, is great and that should be enough oxygen. Well, in most cases it isn't, um, and air stones are required. The reason for this is not the amount of oxygen getting into the pond, it's the amount of oxygen that can be absorbed into the water as the temperatures rise. Uh, so in hotter weather, uh, air stones are essential. So this brings me on to the next point of water temperature. Sturgeon cannot tolerate such high temperatures that koi can, but this is mostly due to the dissolved oxygen levels in the water. So having appropriate air stones will give you some leniency on maximum temperature, but I would never let my pond go above 25 degrees Celsius uh, because water cannot hold 8 milligrams per litre that sturgeon require above this temperature. As you can see from the chart, bearing in mind that this is 100% saturation and in reality you may expect 90% at best, something like that, uh, you can see that 25 degrees Celsius you will require top notch aeration as I provide with air stones to keep that 8 milligrams per litre. The next thing to consider is the food for the sturgeon. They can eat koi food, but this does not give all the necessary nutrients that a sturgeon requires. And the fact that most koi food floats can be a huge issue because it takes a very long time for your sturgeon to get into the habit of eating from the surface. And in my case with my sturgeon, I've tried it before. You can try to force them to eat from the surface because it's the only food you provide. My sturgeon would definitely starve to death before he did that. So I always have to feed him sinking food. But that's not too much of a problem for me. So what sinking food do I feed? Well you can get sinking sturgeon food from most koi shops. And it's best to find something of good quality as it is with koi food. Sturgeons need to get the things they require from the food and it's different from koi food. The food is for both sturgeon and koi then you shouldn't buy that food, you need the food specifically for sturgeon as koi are not really supposed to be eating sturgeon food. So before I go a little deeper, it is important to know that sturgeon prefer to eat little and often and they cannot take in lots of food and cannot eat big things like koi can. So most of the time you will feed the sturgeon and they won't even be on the food. Uh, they will just take what they need and move on. But what you can do is, what I have done, is feed him once a day. Um, the thing about that is that there needs to be other things in the pond, um, other sort of things that they could eat in the pond. So if your pond's really clean, then eventually your surgeon will be wasting away sort of thing and dying if you're just feeding him once a day. Ideally you want to be feeding four times a day to not have any issues. Uh, but again, this is temperature depending, so the warmer it is, the more you want to feed them. And also, keep an eye on koi's intake of sturgeon food. But I don't actually feed sturgeon food four times a day. I actually feed a sinking koi food uh, quite a lot, so that balances it out. The sturgeon gets fed by a fish feeder, which is the one over there on the left. Uh, the little green one. That that fish feeder feeds him at 11 p.m. every night, 
the reason for that is because the koi at that sort of time are a little bit less active to wanting food that you know sort of don't feed as much when it's dark whereas sturgeon are the opposite they don't mind feeding in dark and stuff like that uh, also as the temperature drops and the koi become less and less sort of mobile they'll not be hunting for food at that sort of time whereas if you fed them at the beginning of the day the sturgeon food they might take it when you don't want them to but here's the actual issue that when it comes apparent with food you need to stop feeding koi high growth foods which is what sturgeon is, it's high growth food um, below 15 degrees celsius because their digestive system cannot fully utilize the food to its potential and even lower temperatures below 10 degrees you will start to cause issues as they won't be digesting the food properly uh, but the problem is, is the surgeon will need their food until it gets to 4 degrees Celsius. Below 4 degrees you can stop feeding sturgeon, which is very rare in this country. So you need to be thinking about feeding your sturgeon all the time. Uh, obviously, in smaller and smaller amounts as it gets colder. And one way around that is to feed later at night. And perhaps don't feed with a fish feeder because you need to monitor what you're what you koi are eating at that sort of times of when it's going colder um, so what I would do is just put a few pellets, you know, when it's cold say it's 10 degrees celsius I would just put a few pellets where your sturgeon could get it and not where your koi could get it literally just five or six pellets and if your sturgeon takes them all then the next day I give him a few extra but otherwise if the sturgeon doesn't eat them then the koi will start eating them because obviously the sturgeon will be more lively in the colder temperatures than the koi will so they will get the food first but if there's any food left over it may tempt the koi so just make sure that with colder temperatures that all the food gets eaten by the sturgeon and the koi don't get any but you can have serious issues with your koi when they eat and it has happened to me I have fed sturgeon food and I've probably put in a little bit more than I should have done and uh, it, were a, it were a particularly warm winter day the temperature had just come up and uh, what happened is I fed my sturgeon all the fish were slightly lively all the koi were on it eating it and all that that's not great but I thought it might be alright anyway that night it went really cold and went really cold for the next couple of days and one of the koi actually died and when looking at that koi what actually happened to it is the sturgeon food went rancid inside it and gave it blood poisoning which killed it uh, because its digestive system couldn't actually digest the food so it just uh, killed the koi so just make sure you feed appropriately when the temperatures are low and it's, it's it's easier than I'm making it sound. Don't be put off by getting sturgeon, they are a great addition to your pond. And obviously this pond never actually drops to low temperatures being indoors. Um, it's lowest temperature this winter was 16 degrees Celsius. So I actually didn't have any trouble with temperature and feeding sturgeon food, which is just great for me. Uh, but obviously if you heat your pond to 10 degrees or something like that, you would have a lot less trouble with having a sturgeon. Another issue with keeping sturgeon in ponds is if anything goes wrong with the koi, in other words if they get a disease or a parasite or something like that, sturgeon cannot deal with the majority of products that help koi get rid of parasites. There are many reasons for this, mostly because treatments remove the oxygen from the water, such as potassium permanganate for trichodema. In some cases, even the koi will be gasping at the surface if this happens it is well too late for your sturgeon you can get away with some chemicals it is best to check with the manufacturer in most cases if it is not good for sturgeon it will say but not always it's best to do some research if you do need to treat for trichodema then check out my other videos um, I have video treating with potassium permanganate and it shows you what I do and sort of that's how you get sturgeon through the treatment of potassium permanganate and it will give you a good sort of idea of how to treat with sturgeon in the pond 
basically as much air as you possibly can uh, is a good guideline. A lot of people will tell you to remove the sturgeon when treating the koi. However, uh, the sturgeon will also have the parasite that is affecting the koi. So that is up to you. Although, I've never seen a sturgeon be affected by fluke or trichedema. But I should imagine they can be. Or at least, when you put the sturgeon back into the pond, it could reintroduce that parasite to the koi. Water parameters are not so much of an issue, and sturgeon will survive a lot of things that will easily kill your koi. Uh, the only thing to watch is pH. For sturgeon, they prefer 7 to 7.5 pH, which is also good for koi, uh, but they can go to 8.5 pH. Um, so I think that covers most of the important differences with sturgeon, and I hope I haven't put anyone off keeping them as they're a great addition to the koi pond. Uh, I really like my sturgeon, I enjoy it. When someone spots him, they're like surprised and think you've got a shark in the pond. That's quite kind of funny to me. I enjoy that. Thank you for watching my video. If you want to see more videos about koi or even sturgeon, then subscribe and check out my other videos. Also, if you have any video suggestions or something you would like to know more about, or just a general question about the video, then comment below. I really uh, look forward to reading your comments and I'll reply as soon as I possibly can. And I will see you in the next video.